Radio Day One. It's a pleasure and a blessing for us to be in the presence of God one more time. God allowing us the privilege of gathering together as we have these last Amen. few weeks, and we are grateful that He has allowed us this blessing to be able to yeah. worship Him Amen. in spirit and in truth, whether mm. we're in the building, whether we're at home, whether we're on our job, uh, wherever it may be. Some of us may be riding in our cars, whatever mm. it may be. We are grateful that God has allowed us to come yes together. Amen. Acts chapter 4, at verse 32, the word of God says to you and I, Now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Mm -hmm. And in great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, great grace was upon them all. Mm -hmm. Nor was there any one of them who lacked, for all who were possessors of land or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that they were selling. And they laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. There's a reflection again of the first church coming together and the things that they did. They had simplicity of heart. They had unity of heart. And my prayer is that even though we are looking at what we say the 12th week of our live streaming or streaming live mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. virtual services, we are still people of one heart. Yes. We are still people of one mind because we serve one God yes. who is the father of us all. So let us bow for a moment as we go to God in prayer. Yes. And then we're going to go further in our services in praise in song. Father, how we love you. I love you, God. How we thank you, how we praise you for the opportunity yes. once oh, again yes. you, of being able to gather together in your name. Yes. God, we recognize that the only reason that we're able to do what we're doing right now is because of your grace. Yes. It is because of your mercy. Of it is because you have chosen to demonstrate to us again that you are God and you thank got you. all power. Thank you. You have chosen to demonstrate to us that you can do anything yes. without assistance, without aid, uh, without help from anybody else. Yes. And so, God, we are here this morning to give you the honor, the glory, yes. and the praise that is rightfully yours. My God. We're here, Father, to say My thank God. you. Thank you, Lord. For allowing us again the thank moment you, and minutes thank of you. life, allowing us to have food on our thank table, clothes yes. on our back, allowing us to have jobs yes. to go to thank have. You, God. The, the activities of our limbs. God, thank, thank you, you, so you. Thank thank for you, allowing us to know that you're God and beside you there is no other. Allowing God, us to know that it is in you we live, we move, and we have our My existence. God, yes. And so, Father, since we met 168 hours ago, we mm -hmm. are grateful thank for you. how you have kept thank us. So great. Thank you. We are grateful for the things that you have taught us. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful, for Lord, for the things that you have shown thank us. God. We are grateful, God, for the things that we have experienced oh, in demonstrating the fact that you're still God. You're still on your yes. throne. Oh, yes. You have not yes. relinquished your authority. You have not turned it over to anyone else. And so, God, we're here to say yes. thank you once again. Thank you. We're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We're here to give you the honor that you yes. so rightfully deserve. Thank you, God. So, Lord, for the moments and minutes that are yet before us, we're going to put everything else aside. We're going to lay everything else aside. We're going to forget about every everything else, every challenge, every trial. And we will focus My on Lord. the one that helps us through the challenge. Yes. Focus on the one that helps us through the trial. Yes. Help us, Father, to clap our hands. Yes. Help us to pat our feet. Yes. Help yes, us God. to say Help amen. Us, Lord. Help us to rejoice Help us, Help us, and to have Jesus. joy in Jesus. Help us, Lord. To the end, Lord, that at the end of this day, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, my, it my, will my. have been shown Ooh. in the record. Yes, it will have yes, been sir. shown in the book of life. Yes, God. That on this day, yes, God. we gave you praise yes, on Lord. this day. Yes, Lord. We yes, worship Lord. you on this day. Yes, Lord. We gave you honor on this day. Yes, Lord. We my told Lord. you thank you my on Lord. this my day. Lord. Yes. We recognize that you're God and you're God all by yourself. Yes, Lord. To you, Lord, yes. we give all the honor, the glory, and glory, praise. glory, in glory. Jesus in the name, name of Jesus. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Because we know that we've come this far by faith. Have faith 
in Jesus, have faith in God, and he will take us through all of our trials and our tribulations. Come on, y'all. to walk with us. Walk with me, Lord. We need him to guide us and lead us. Walk with me. While we own this pilgrim While journey, I'm yes, sir. On this pilgrim journey. Pilgrim journey. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. He said he'd never leave us. Walk with me, yeah. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. While I'm on this. While I'm on this. Pilgrim journey. Pilgrim journey. Jesus. 
Come on, tell them, hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. That's the way he going to guide you. Tell him to hold your hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Everything we go through in life, ask God to hold You can always call on Jesus. Be my friend, Lord. Be my friend. Be my friend. While I'm old. While I'm old. Pilgrim journey. Pilgrim journey. I want, I want, I want I Jesus. Want children so we can have a song with our kids on today. You 
on my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh, my God, this love, how can it making you and I can do that because he is our friend what a friend we have in Jesus thank you God all our sins and grief to bear what a privilege to carry everything Everything to God in prayer. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus.
because everything we go through in life, we can take it to God in prayer. No matter what it is, we can take it to God in prayer. We can't always find our friends. Our friends might be far away, but we can always count on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we come once more ball bowing before you, trusting you in what you're doing in our lives. Because you are the God of heaven and earth. Because you do sit high, but you so look low. You're the one that has all power, knows everything, and is everywhere at the same time. So, Master, we call upon you this morning because we need you. Yes, Lord. First thing we need you for this morning is that we need your forgiveness. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Because, Master, there are some things we've done Jesus. that were not pleasing to you. There were some things we said were disturbing to your ears. There were some things we thought brought anger in your heart. So, Master, we pray that we, you would forgive us this morning. But the good news is that you've promised in your word that you would forgive us. Yeah. You'd take our sins and cast them in the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you, Lord. Never to rise again. But we know that the only way that is possible is that we've come to believe in your son, Jesus Christ. In the fact that you gave your son and he gave his life. He hung, bled, and died on the cross to forgive us of our sins. We thank you for Jesus this morning, Lord. Then, Master, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and guards our heart that controls our life, that leads us in the way you would have us to go. Yes. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Then, Master, we thank you for your word that is a light into our pathway, and it leads us through this life we live, Master. We thank you for your word this thank morning. You, thank you, Lord. Master, all that you've done would have been enough, but you were so good and so gracious to us that you've placed us in your church. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for those who believe in you all over the world. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for including us in that number. Yes, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to, to be a part of your family, Master. Yes, Lord. Then, Master, we thank you for the, the local body you've placed us in, the Good Shepherd Baptist Church. Yes, Lord. For some 61 years now, you've allowed us to gather together to be one family, Master. We thank you this morning, Lord. As a result of us being a part of this body, we have some special concerns this morning, Lord. We pray for Brother Dave Callahan, Master, that you will continue to have your way in his life, Master. We pray for Sister Almira Ellison, Master, that you would have your way in her life, Lord. We pray for Sister Addison this morning, Lord. We pray that you would have your way in her life. We pray for Sister Carolyn Ben, Master. Continue to lead God and keep her in your care, Master. Then, Master, we, there are so many others, Master. We pray for the Good Shepherd Church family as a whole. Those that are sitting at home that are anxious to get back, we pray that you would give them the patience they need, that they would follow your lead and trust you in what you're doing, Master. Master, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord. That you've set aside to bring glory to you. So we pray that you take everything we say and do in this place give you glory, to give you honor, to give you oh, praise. Yes. Lord. Yes. And Master, we pray for the one that's going to break the bread of life. Yes. We pray now that you would stand up in him, allow him to sit down, yes. that you would meet the needs of our lives yes. as a result of your preached word this morning. Yes. And we'll be happy to give you praise, honor, and glory yes. in everything we say and do, Master. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Jesus. Amen and thank God.
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17. And that is going to be our focal passage for today. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 at verse number 17. We'll commence our reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The word of God says to us, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Just to tag this text this morning for the moments that we have, the fundamentals of reconciliation, the fundamentals of reconciliation. We have a pandemic in the world. We have a plethora of problems in America. This includes abortion, injustice, inequality that devalue human life. A major glaring issue is the inability to identify who are the people of God in contrast to the people of the world. Uh, for the most part, the gospel of Jesus Christ is most proclaimed to the church rather than the world. In too many cases, the word of God is treated as though it is a private interpretation rather than that which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Sin is watered down as mistakes rather than an affront against the righteousness of God. Yet even in light of the severe issues, God remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13, the buzzword, the buzzword right now, the buzzword uh, recon reconciliation has been remarked uh, in the vocabulary of our society on the heels of the tragedy of George Floyd and others. It is a word used primarily by those who remain steadfast on the front lines of social justice. Yet, however, their cries decrease like like a distant echo after the loud protests of dissatisfaction have dispelled and we return to reticence and complacency. But I want to believe that this time uh, things will be different for us. Uh, in this pandemic, God has gotten our attention. Uh, we're not sure who might be infected by or who we might in fact, therefore, many of us have found time for reflection. God has shown us that many, many things we have held up as sacred and untouchable are not as infallible as we projected them to be. If nothing else, he has shown us the fundamental reality that he will not share his glory with anything or anyone else. Now, now that things are opening back up, um, some truth uh, to what we learned while we were staying at home and, and working safe is, is starting to be revealed. Uh, we, are not, we are not the United States. We are, we are the divided states. We are divided socially. We are divided economically. We are divided racially. And we are divided morally. Without debate, without debate, without debate, the greatest breach of all is in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we have the smaller division of the modified services that we have been uh, uh, honoring, which some did and others did not. We, there are some concerns about receiving money from the government. Others agree, says some say we shouldn't. There's the current process of talk about reopening uh, some have done so, some are making plans, and, and some are not even close. Uh, 
Uh, more importantly, we, we claim to have the same Father, trust in the same Lord, and read the same Bible, yet we lack unity. There's a lack of unity on the interpretation of scriptures. There's a lack of unity based on political affiliations. There's a lack of unity on the response or lack thereof of social justice. The racial divide has plagued, that has plagued the church in America since its inception. It remains. Therefore, reconciliation is needed. Paul the Apostle, in his second letter to the church of God, which was at Corinth, wrote to them and reminds us of the basic necessity for being reconciled. Reconciliation, or to be reconciled on the human level, is to cause a person to accept or be resigned to something not desired. It can be to cause to become friendly or peaceable again. It can also mean to compose or settle a dispute. All of this can happen from a head-only perspective. However, when Paul used the word being controlled by the Holy Spirit, he included the intellect of the head and his indwelling of the heart. Thus, it means to bring about a change that restores harmony between persons or more significantly between man and man. God. The Bible teaches us that while the justice of God must be satisfied, it is human beings who must be reconciled or brought back into harmony with God. Reconciliation is a change. Here's the definition. Reconciliation is a change of a relationship between God and man based on the change status of of humanity through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. I think that's worth repeating. Reconciliation is a change of relationship between God and man based upon the changed status of humanity through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Um, Paul, Paul, Paul was in, he was in a divided church at Corinth. He, in his first letter, he addressed a myriad of problems there. Oh, that issue span from the preference of a certain preacher to the misinformation concerning the resurrection. Uh, in the second epistle, he himself was the reason for that separation. He knew the only, the only course of action to set things in order was reconciliation. He knew it was necessary to bring harmony to the church. Brothers and sisters, we'll be honest with ourselves that there is, there is a divide and there is a division. There is a tension that we are having to deal with in America. There, there, are, there are some issues that need to be repaired. There are some breaches in relationships that need to be restored. And what I am excited about what I am confident about, what I am most enthused about is that God is using, God will, if we choose to, God will choose to use the church of Jesus Christ to bring us into harmony with him. And I say to be in harmony with him because it's not critical, as critical that we be in harmony with ourselves unless we are first in harmony with God. If, if there's still the breach, if there's division, if there is contention with those of us in the body of Christ, it is literally going to be impossible for us to call out to the world. Let's get back together. It's going to be difficult to call out to society. Let's forgive one another. It's going to be difficult for us to call out to society and say, hey, it doesn't have to be this way. We as the church have to make up our minds that there's going to be harmony between us and God. And then there can be harmony between us and one 
another. That's why Paul would say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he would remind us of any man being Christ, he becomes what? A new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have now become new. Old things, old things, those old ways, those old habits, those old uh, ways of thinking, those old uh, 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 machinations that we go through, those old traditions sometimes that we can hold on to, those old habits that we had. He is saying that God has now put allowed us to have all of those old things put away. And behold, now all things have become new. We are, we are new creatures in Jesus Christ. We have been given another chance. We now have a new lease on life. And there is the possibility for you and I who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to help others to come into a right relationship with Jesus just as we are. So he would remind us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. But he says in verse 18, all things are of God. What all things are we talking about? In this case, Paul, the apostle Paul, he says, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Understand, God made us. God created us. He made us in his very image and after his very likeness. But through Adam, the Bible reminds us in Romans chapter 5 that all men sin, therefore all men die. And there is a breach in that relationship that has been caused by all of us who are represented in Adam. There has been a breach in the relationship with God. And although we're the ones that Broke the relationship. God, through Jesus Christ, chose to restore us to a right relationship with him. If you don't get happy about anything else, you ought to praise God for the grace of the fact that man was the one, humanity was the one that broke the relationship. was the one who restored us to a right relationship with him. So what it would say is that it reminds us now all things are of God who has reconciled us, meaning God is the one who made it happen. God is the one who moved us to reconciliation. Not only did he move us through to reconciliation, but Christ was the means of his Movement. You remember Christ, don't you? The only begotten Son of God, the perfect, the perfect Lamb of God, the one who John declared the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world, the Christ, the one who walked the streets of Jerusalem, who healed those who were sick, who 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 cast out demons, those who 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 were outskirt on the outskirts of Israel and that reality, he restored them into right relationships. You remember Jesus, don't you? He is the one who met the widow of Nain on her way to bury her child and raise him from the dead. He is the one that fed 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves. He is the one that walked on water and demonstrated that he had power over nature. You remember Jesus, don't you? So God now takes his only son his innocent son, his perfect son, his righteous son, his, his beloved son. And God allows him in this movement for reconciliation, he allows the son to become the means whereby God would put us and hu humanity that rebelled against him, God would use his innocent son and allow him to die on the old rugged cross, allow him to die a cruel death, not because of anything that he had done, but because of our sin. Can you, can you just for just a little while think about your sin before Jesus Christ? Can, can you think about all the things that you did 
before your relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't mind, just think about the things that you do now that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But because of us, God, God made the move and God provided the means for reconciliation so that there could be harmony between humanity and God on the basis of what, not what God had done, but what humanity had done. Bible, the Bible reminds us, Paul, we're going to remind us in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5, verse 18. He says, now all things are of God who has reconciled. He made the movement to himself through Christ. He is the means. And notice what he reminds us and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of things that we ought to do. We ought to praise God. Uh, we ought to feed the hungry. We, yeah, we, 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 ought to, we ought to visit those who are in prison. We, we ought to do all those things. We ought to see about the elderly. We ought to take care of children. We ought to serve God in all kinds of ways. But we've got to remember we've also been given the ministry of reconciliation. The ability, the power to put harmony back together with God and humanity has been given to the church. It has not been given to the government. It has not been given to social entities. That responsibility has been given to the church. We have the ministry of reconciliation. If there's anybody, if there's anybody that understands what it's like, anybody that understands what it means to not be part of the the family of God, if there's anybody that understands. I love the way that Paul says it in Romans chapter 3, and I'm just going to read it just to edify myself. Romans chapter 3, Paul, in verse 9, Paul says, What then? Are we better than they? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There's none who does good. No, not one. The throat is an open tomb. Their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction, and misery are in their ways, and they, the way of peace, they have not known, and there is no fear of God before their eyes. If anybody knows what it's like to have God, to see God as an enemy, does anybody who knows what it's like to have somebody who want to love you and you don't let them love you. If there's anybody who knows what it's like to reject someone who wants to hold on to you, it ought to be us who are part of the church of Jesus Christ. So when we look at our country and we look at the problems of our nation, we look at the problems of our world, when we look at the problems that are there, whether it's politics, whether, again, it's on jobs, whether it's in homes, when we look at all the problems that are there, the one entity in the world that has the answer, the one entity in the world that has the solution, the one entity in the world that has the capacity, the one entity in the world that has the intellect, the one entity in the world that can make it happen is the church of Jesus Christ. And if we can get it together with ourselves, we certainly can help a world that's, that somebody would say going to hell in a handbasket. We can help change the course of people's lives if we have harmony amongst ourselves. Lest I keep you too long, he's reminded us in verse 19, that is that God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. God is not charging us 
with our trespasses. We know we sin. We sin because Adam, uh, because of Adam's sin, all men sin, but he did not hold, hold it against us. The Bible clearly says, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We see the movement of God. We see the means, the means is by Christ. We see that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. But we also have the message of reconciliation. Listen, my hope is that when we look at what's going on in our country, there's a lot of conversations that are going on. And I thank God for the conversations. I pray that there's going to be some reform. I pray that there are going to be laws that change. They say some things are happening right now in the area of Minnesota, in the area again of Missouri. Some things are already changing. But the reality is if the heart don't change, if the heart don't change, if the heart does not change, you can have all the laws you want, but if the heart is not changed, the only one that has the message that can change the heart is the church of Jesus Christ. He has given to us the, mid, the word of reconciliation. He's given to us the message of reconciliation. And I'm, my prayer is, that when we come out of this pandemic, when we come out of this economic crisis, as we work through the economy, as we work through reopening, as we work through restoration, my hope is that on the other side, those of us who've been silent about Jesus will no longer be silent about Jesus. Those of us that haven't really been talking about him on our job, going to open up, talk about him on our job. Those of us that haven't been talking about him in the marketplace will open up and give folk the message concerning Jesus Christ. Because God has given you and I the message of reconciliation. You know, one of the things I learned, I know there are a lot of people with a whole lot of problems. I know there are a lot of people that are doing a whole lot of bad things in our world. But God has helped me to understand in this time of reflection that if I don't take some time to try to tell them about Jesus, I really don't have no right to complain about what's going on in my society. I don't have no right to complain about what's happening in my neighborhood. I don't have the right to complain about what's happening in my city. I have no right to complain what's happening in my county. If the people of God would just open up our mouth and tell somebody that Jesus saves to the utmost, Jesus saves to the guttermost, Jesus saves. If we just open up our mouth. Oh, I'm I'm grateful for the protests. I like I'm 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 grateful for the protests that are going on that are bringing some awareness to the fact that change needs to come. But I'm saying it to the Good Shepherd Church when we get on the other side of this thing. When we can get to the point that folk will answer the door without a mask. When we get to the point that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. My hope is that Saturday before the first Sunday, we will have a protest against sin. But we will proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we have the ministry. We have the message of reconciliation. Paul, Paul would help us to understand that what he was talking about was not only for the unbeliever, but he also has to understand that it's for the believer. He says in verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, Paul is talking about himself and the other disciples, uh, the other apostles, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Listen, folk, we're not, as the church, we're not talking about just being reconciled to the new laws that will come. We're not 
just being reconciled to social justice. We're not just talking about being reconciled to our, our Caucasian brothers and sisters, our brown brothers and sisters, our Asian brothers and sisters that sometimes we fail to have conversation. We're not talking about just having harmony with them. We are talking about being reconciled to God. If all of us can understand that there is some gaps in our own lives as it relates to our relationship with God, we can understand that if we could repair the ruptures that are there with God, if we could prepare where we have not been in a right relationship with God, if we can repair where we have not prayed like we ought to pray, we can repair that we've not studied like we ought to study, when we can re repair the fact that we have not served like we should be serving, that we have not loved our wives like Christ loved the church, wives have not submitted to their husbands, children have not been obedient to their parents, if we can repair that with God then we can properly represent God and be the ambassadors that he called for us to be. Be reconciled. I don't know what church I'm talking to. I don't know what member of the church I'm talking to, but I encourage you, be reconciled to God. And Why do we do that? And I'm done. For he made him who knew no sin. God! God made him. That, that's our motivation, y'all. That why, why should I be reconciled back to God? Why should I be in harmony with everybody in the body of Christ? Why should I do everything that I can to have a conversation with folk that I've never talked to? Why should I do that? The answer is verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin, to be sin for us. I don't know about you all, but I'm so glad of God's divine unfairness. I'm glad God is not fair. I'm, I'm so glad God is not fair. I'm glad he operates totally from grace. Because you know what fairness is. You know what fairness is. Fairness is if you do for me, I'll do for you. Fairness is if you got a dollar, I, I, I think we can share. You get 50 cents, I get 50 cents. That's, that's fairness, fairness, that's, that's fairness. If you got two suit of clothes, you're willing to give me a pair, and I can, and, and I can, I can we, we both, that's fair. But I'm so glad God wasn't fair. Because mm. had God treated us like we deserve to be treated, none of us, can I get a witness here? None of us would have survived. But God allowed his son to die in our place. Allowed his son to die in our stead. And then watch now. Showing us is all grace. He turned around and gave us the righteousness of his innocent son. To hellish folk like you and I. Now all I'm saying, if God can do that, the motivation for us is to talk to a man that may not know Jesus so that he might come to know Christ, but to also talk to that man that knows Jesus, that may be acting like he doesn't know Jesus, to recognize that God is calling us to reconciliation. God is calling us to harmony. God is calling us not to be divided, not to be separated. Because of the great price that he paid to get you and I to where we are right now. Right here in this time of life. God made him who knew no sin be sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. America is in trouble. America has a lot of problems. But here is a wonderful opportunity for those of us who are the people of God to present to a world that's in need and to a church that is so divided the ministry, the fundamentals of reconciliation. 
God moved. God provided the means through his son, Jesus Christ. He's given us the ministry. He's given us the message. And now we have the motivation. So my encouragement, let's go out. Let's do our part to first be reconciled to God so that we can be properly reconciled to one another so that the church will reflect the harmony that is within the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can live to give him glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perhaps there may be someone today who hasn't trusted Christ as your Savior. Uh, you may be watching by way of streaming live. You may be listening by way of a conference call. Uh, some of you may be viewing it on YouTube, wherever it may be. We want to let you know today that God gave his son, and his son gave his life so that you and I could live life abundantly, you and I could live life in a way that brings glory to God. You and I could live life on a level that no human being could ever attain without the sacrificial death of his son, Jesus Christ. So today, if you haven't trusted Jesus as your savior, uh, we want you to believe that he died for your sins. Yeah, you may be asking, what are my sins? Those, those, those thoughts that you have and those ways that you have independent of God. When you say I'm my own person, I'm going to do my own thing. Um, I don't care what anybody else say, I'm going to do me. That's, that's, that's evidence of sin because it is, it is contrary to the very creator who gives you breath, who gives you the ability to think, who, 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 who made this world for you to live in and provides you all of the resources that he provides for you. And to rebel against him, to say that I got this, is a demonstration of sin. But here is the good news. God gave his son to die. He allowed him to be buried in a grave. But God raised him from the dead. And raising him from the dead said that he demonstrated that he had power over everything. So I don't know what has power over you. I don't know what's been controlling you in your life. But I want to let you know that Jesus' power, the power of God can override. The power of God can dominate every other situation and every other circumstance of your life. So today, trust him. Today, believe in him. And you may, you may be with a believer right now. Just tell them what you believe. Help, help, help. It, it, it may be that you might ask them, could, could you give me, give me a little bit more insight into what that means? It may be again that you're by yourself and you don't have anybody to contact. I want to encourage you to call this number 713-672-9847. 713-672-9847. And we will be glad to respond to your call to give you greater insight in what does it mean to trust in Jesus as your Savior. What does it mean to be saved? What does it mean to have eternal life? What does it mean to have your sins forgiven? What does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a follower of Jesus Christ? We'll be glad to assist you in that way. Father, how we love you and thank you again for your word and for reminding us the importance of reconciliation and that that power for reconciliation is in the church of Jesus Christ. Help us to use what we have for the purpose of bringing glory and honor to you. But we ask it all in Jesus' name and his name alone we pray. And all who agreed said, amen. Today is also the day that as members of the Good Shepherd Church that we share and partake of the Lord's table. So I'm going to ask those of you that are in your homes and the like that you would get ready for that. Those of you that are here present with us, if you would uh, just come one by one if you will. Families can come together, that's fine. And let us partake again of the body and the blood of Jesus. That's it, that's it. Whoever you may be, come on, one by one, if you will, please. Come on, thank you so much. Thank you so much.
tab down to break it. Tab up to release everything else. Tab down to break it. third time and I thank God for Pastor Johnson and his prayer. He did pray for us that we do not become impatient. Uh, we are we are having some discussions but right now we're just going to ask you to hold your peace as best you can. On the same night in which Jesus was betrayed he took bread he broke it, he blessed it he gave the Father thanks for it and he said this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat all of it and they all ate After the supper, he took the cup. He declared that this is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink all of it, and they all drank. So Paul reminds us, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember the Lord's death until he comes again. And all the people said, Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. You know what your responsibilities are. You know what you have been doing again. To again to show your thankfulness to God. The word reminds us that if we sow sparingly, we're going to reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, God promised that we will reap bountifully. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. I'm asking us as a church to continue praying for Brother Larry Henry. Larry's still in the process of recovering uh, from his heart surgery earlier in the year. Uh, he's getting better day by day, but some days is, he's feeling the effects of it a little bit more than others. I want to certainly thank God for Brother Clyde Berry. Brother Clyde uh, was having some issues with his breathing, and he went to work, went back to work on last week, and God allowed him to work 40 hours first week he goes back to work so praise the Lord for uh, for that awesome blessing and then we continue praying for the family of George Floyd uh, we know that tomorrow the spotlight is going to be on Houston Texas as it relates to his memorial service or his funeral service and the like let's keep praying for that family that is that is out of everything that's going on folk I tell you all that's my greater concern it's for that family. Uh, they are the ones who are bearing the greatest burden um, uh, in terms of what took place uh, two weeks ago on Monday. And so we want to keep that family uppermost in our prayers. We're certainly praying for Pastor Ramos Wright and the Fountain of Praise who are going to be facilitating those services on tomorrow uh, that God again would protect and provide necessary resources for them to accomplish the task that has been set before him. If you would help me, one hand clap. Ariana Clay, Marcia Skinner, Camille White, Salem Wiltz, Laquelle Beatty, Lalani Morgan, Shamika Reed. Happy birthday to every, every one of you. I, I figured I figured it was best to stop, try to then rather try to say it fast. Amen. N Nalani, Nalani, Nalani. You gotta let that you gotta let that roll. Uh, no anniversary for us to celebrate. Let's not forget we're getting ready to transition to our Sunday school. Pastor Johnson, uh, Pastor Tim Johnson is going to be leading our men uh, in teaching our Sunday school on today. Guys, you call the number that we call for the prayer line, the old line that we've already ha always always had. Ladies, you're going to be using the new number, again, 605-313-5488, 605-313-5488, 605-313-5488, the access code 889-555, 889-555, 889-555. Uh, we're going to start our Sunday school at, at 1020, 
and I pray that everyone will respond properly. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Now, I want y'all to know, Good Shepherd, I want y'all to know, see, already God knows, God knows if you are attending Sunday school or not. Now, now watch this. I know if you attended Sunday school or not because there is a record of your telephone numbers that you called. Now, here's the other thing. Here's the thing. What I don't know is if you just called the line and put the phone down. But God knows that. So please keep in mind, going forward, that the goal is still for us to stay in the word, still to study the word, uh, still to apply the word to our lives, even though we may not be all coming to the building. We're still working on that, and we will let you know that information as soon as all of us can possibly let you know please ma'am and please sir one more thing this is very personal thank y'all so much for just the overwhelming demonstration of love on last Thursday uh, the cards the emails the texts the phone calls I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of that I started getting I started getting information communication at five o'clock Thursday morning up until about nine o'clock Thursday night and I enjoyed every single second of it so thank you all again for your demonstration of love now unto him who is able to keep us from falling to present us faultless from the only wise God who has uh, both dominion and power he's got it now and he will have it forever until we meet again, until we greet again, God be with us. God bless you. We love you.